Hey, hey, everybody. Lemony Vengeance here. And today, uh, instead of showing off something that I made, I wanted to go over and get up close and personal with the Sega Naomi. This is specifically a Naomi 2 setup. Um, and discuss what each component is. And uh, for those of you that are looking to pick up... Um, a Naomi for yourself what you're going to run into cost wise um, now the Sega Naomi for those of you that don't know is what the Dreamcast was based on uh, and when I say based on I mean it was uh, very nearly the uh, Naomi hardware um, it, it wasn't exactly a dumbed down version of the Naomi hardware in the Dreamcast uh, as such a lot of the games that were on the Naomi uh, are on the Dreamcast as direct arcade ports. The Dreamcast was one of the first consoles that had near 100% uh, faithful arcade ports, which made it a great system to um, to to play. Uh, it also was the inspiration for me to get into uh, arcade gaming, as uh, I previously stated in another video. It was really, really kind of zappy. Anyway, so the Naomi came in two flavors. You got the Naomi 1, which is a white console, kind of a cream color console. And the Naomi 2, which is blue or black, depending on who you ask. Um, this was a cartridge-based console. So you'll notice I'm taking this off. I'll talk a little bit about this in a second. But you'll notice that it does have room for a cartridge. So basically, you could change the games out however which way you wanted to um, which makes it a, a, a lot more versatile than uh, other arcade games of the day um, Sega is uh, was expanding off the success of the Neo Geo taking a lot of notes from them uh, and their previous arcade board the STV um, Sega has uh, gone forward and used this same technology uh, but in a different way with their subsequent uh, Chihiro um, Triforce uh, and uh, their uh, Lindbergh uh, arcade boards. Um, so this is a JVS or JAMA video standard board. You'll notice that it's a little bit different than JAMA. It doesn't have an arc. It doesn't have a JAMA edge. It uses uh, stereo audio for the audio. It uses a DB15 connector for video. What most people commonly refer to as VGA and it uses these connectors for power uh, it supplies uh, positive 12 positive 5 and uh, positive 3.3 uh, volts in addition to the grounds I think that the brown is 3.3 the yellow is 5 and the uh, red is 12 um, for those of you who have standard ch cabinets uh, there is a solution for you, and, <clears throat> oh, I forgot, JVS uses uh, USB as a medium. Now, a lot of people think that USB is kind of a standard. Uh, it is, but Naomi didn't use your stereotypical USB connection. Basically, it only sends, uh, it sends the controls a completely different way than USB but uses the USB cable as a medium to connect. Now for those of you who have JAMA cabinets and want to be able to use a Naomi 2 in them, um, there are a couple of things you need. You need an I.O. or an input-output board and that's what this is. This is an input-output board made by Capcom. Um, <clears throat> so let's say you, you've got a Naomi 1 and I'll explain why it's important that you have a Naomi 1 first or later on, but let's say you have a Naomi 1 and you want to play like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on your cabinet. Uh, you need one of these, primarily because uh, it accepts uh, the controls over JAMA and outputs them to, and you can't see it on the back because I have it connected a specific way, but it allows you to connect a USB cable from this, which translates the controls into a medium that JVS can read and then uh, 
outputs them to the Naomi board. Uh, it also can, it has power, so if you do not have a JBS power supply or a Sun power supply, you can convert that over to the Naomi board. Uh, it also uh, uses uh, one of my favorite um, methods of control, the CPS2 kick harness, which is pretty much a universal kick harness uh, nowadays. And it translates that into the extra three buttons and then sends that over the USB cable into the uh, the filter board here. Um, the reason why I said it's important that I stated Naomi 1 is because uh, this pretty much can only handle power-wise Naomi 1 and that's really it. If you want to have anything else like a Naomi 2 or a uh, uh, GD-ROM unit or a compact flash card you're going to need to have a what what's called a Sun power supply. Sun Electronics is the name of the company that made them, and that's why they call them that. Um, you'll notice that I have one of these boards. This is what's called a net dim board. It allows you to uh, not only load games off of Compact Flash, uh, but also uh, a GD-ROM, which is basically the same format as a Dreamcast. Uh, it also allows you to load games across the network um, using the uh, the network loading software. Now, um, it's it's kind of a gray area, the network loading, primarily because you kind of need an extra chip in here called a zero key or a zero pick that will um, allow you to, uh, it, it basically is a security key, uh, allows you to... Uh, load the games over a network cable. Uh, a lot of net dims that come over from Japan don't have the batteries in here, so you need to replace the batteries. Um, I forget where I got mine, but there's a link on uh, sega-naomi.com uh, that talks about what's needed to replace these. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, so, as far as cost goes on this, your uh, getting into a Naomi is uh, not uh, something for the faint of something for the faint of heart. Uh, it's actually it does require a, a lot of investment up front, um, but the out the, the payout is uh, uh, pretty good, especially if you get a uh, uh, a net dim. The um, the the net dim itself, I think I had imported from Japan for one hundred and twenty dollars. The uh, uh, Capcom I.O., as you can see, it has Japanese on it. I had this imported from Japan for $120 as well. The Naomi board is, uh, if you get a Naomi one, you can get them for between $60 to $80. I actually have one for sale right now. Um, it'll probably be up on eBay later on because I'm not getting any bites from anybody on the ar arcade forum. So, um the Naomi 2, you're going to be spending between $150 and $200 on. And the important thing to know with the Naomi 2 is beyond Virtua Fighter 4 and one of the Sega Tennis games, it's pretty much devoted for driving games like Crazy Taxi, High Roller. Actually, no, I think that's a Chihiro game. So the Crazy Taxis, the Wild Riders, the uh, American 18-wheeler, stuff like that. Um, there is a rumor going around that it loads and runs Naomi One games a little bit better, but I haven't tested it. So, um, if you have to invest in a Sun power supply, you can get those for between $35 to $60. So, the grand total investment on this between everything. Oh, and if you get a compact flash, the compact flash readers are pretty expensive. Um, they're between 100 and 150 dollars, and the GD ROMs are, you know, can be pretty expensive as well. I've never looked into one because I don't want to get something that's basically going to fail. Um, the GD ROM readers have uh, unfortunately not been very reliable because they are constantly reading. I mean, they'll load the game into the DIM itself. But the fact that it has to spin it up every single time to check the game, verify that the the key here, the security key, is for the game that's loaded in the CD-ROM. It's just a big hassle if it breaks. Um, so right around uh, grand total, 
Uh, you're going to be spending anywhere between $350 to $400 depending on the solution that you want. Um, it's, like I said, a pretty big investment, but it's worth it. Uh, a little known or actually a widely known fact about the Naomi t uh, and Naomi 2. Um, if you look closely here, let me see if I can get, get it. But you'll see something right there that says Maple 01 and Maple 23. Um, the Naomi uses the same Maple bus as the Dreamcast controller. If you split a Dreamcast controller open, it'll say Maple bus. This uh, means that you can actually use Dreamcast controllers to control games on your Naomi. Um, there are a lot of Japanese arcade cabinets. In fact, the Sega Impress, or no, the Capcom Impress, actually has ports on it for Dreamcast controllers so that you can um, use your, your Dreamcast controllers on there. There are a lot of the Naomi games that have um, secret character unlockables for VMUs, so, uh, there are some cabinets out there like the Sega, um, Naomi Universal cabinets and the Net Cities and the New Net Cities that actually have VMU card readers built into them, uh, so that you can actually, uh, read the VMUs and pull secret characters and whatnot off of the, um, arcade boards. It's actually pretty cool. It's some good forward thinking that Sega had that I don't think was ever used. I've seen maybe a handful, two at the most, of the uh, Capcom Impress control panels that have the Dreamcast ports built into them. Um, they're usually pretty expensive. I had an opportunity to buy one, but unfortunately I had to pass on and kind of kicking myself on that. But um, that's it for the Naomi. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, uh, yeah, have a very good day. Talk to you later.